Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about test driven development, mastering it, and if it's enough. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made, which is called Which is Faster on Average, Tidity or Writing Tests After the Code? And the question was Is mastering test driven development enough? Or are there other things such as BDD or behavioral driven development that has to be mastered in conjunction with test driven development? Well, uh, the short answer is it very much depends on what type of developer you want to be. Uh, do you want to be a front end developer, back end developer? Do you want to be a good developer? Do you want to just be paid to write code? Like, it's really up to you like what the, what the answer is going to be here. Because if you want to be a front-end developer, I will I will fall back in my share in shock if you even get to a point where you master TDD. Because the, le the, the level of uh, test quality in front-end is a joke, a flat joke. Most front-end developers don't even know how to do basic test-driven development, or they're at the very least not accustomed to it. Uh, I've never. It's actually rare that I interview anybody in front-end that has like that even says that they do test-driven development. Like the the comment is always, uh, "Oh yes, we don't focus a lot on that in our project, and we want to do it. We sort of think about doing it, but we, you know." that sort of thing, right? Uh, it's usually a little bit better with the back-end developers, but they have more of a culture around it than the front-end developers do. Because, hey, front-end is about making things pretty and not to have them work over time. So when it comes to BDD on the other hand, that's a more complicated question because the only people on average that has any knowledge of BDD and any real use for it often, I'm sorry to say that that's at least a perception, uh, are the corporate level developers. Uh, the people who have been working at such scale that uh, you have multiple teams working on the same product and you simply cannot sustain the system's quality uh, without having it. And uh, it's actually rare that uh, this is one of those areas where you probably may or may not have seen one of the, my videos when I talk about that there are few there are tells on a software developer when they interview if they have any real professional grade software experience or if they primarily worked in like small agencies or on like these kind of low uh, low stakes project uh, and an example of uh, experiences that you will only get at higher scale is CI pipelines and like uh, things like that. BDD is a similar sort of thing. It's extraordinarily rare that you know a a freelancer or someone who works at a small agency or something like that has any knowledge of BDD and it's not always all that common either to see that the corporate level developers are know, know about it. So it's really up to you guys. I would, I would go as far as to say this. If you want to cover the basics of what a software developer is supposed to know, TDD is just fine. You can stay at TDD. You don't have to learn more. However, if you want to be good and become a good developer and actually be able to go up to an architect level and CTO levels and like you to progress your career above a, just a code monkey, it's not enough to just know TDD. Simple as that. Uh, BDD is uh, one version. I mean, you don't technically have to do BDD because that's there's there are semantically dif semantic differences between BDD and end-to-end -end testing and things of this nature, but it is a higher form of testing. Let's just call it that and that sort of testing is necessary f often at the larger scales uh, simply because some when you get to a certain size of system it's not possible to endlessly just hire workers like QA or testers to just sit there and manually click through things and there are so many moving parts that something is bound to break sooner or later uh, the piece of advice that I gave this subscriber that I will give you guys as well is that if you want to cover all your bases at least currently and be fairly certain that you will be a world-class uh, developer in terms of knowledge when it comes to automated testing and things like that focus first and foremost on TDD then learn BDD visual regression testing and contract-based testing 
these four uh, are in my experience the four main factors that will determine how well you do with your testing like your overall testing strategy there are other forms of testing i mean we can talk about integration testing versus unit testing and then we of course have uh, uh, things such as property based testing like these more advanced forms of testing but they are more niched towards specific patterns of working that are I'll leave it to you guys to decide whether you feel these are useful or not, but I can say that these four that I mentioned, they are based like at least TDD and BDD are like bare bone things for a corporation, like a big corporation. Uh, in my experience, uh, visual regression testing, I would add there too as well because practically, I mean, it's it's such it makes such a difference in quality of out, uh, output um, and quality of the system and contract based testing is like if you're doing microservices and you're not doing contract based testing i truly pity you holy shit i pity you uh, it's uh, it's the best thing there is in a distributed system uh, contract based testing you should look it up uh, if you don't know about it uh, that's my experience at the very least so the follow up question is but frederick to become a software technical architect perhaps perhaps understanding only and only using tdd is enough I feel like you're trying to lead me into giving you the answer that you want. It sounds to me like you're one of those people who wants to do the bare minimum and then become something. And I'm sorry, I just I'll give you the answer, but I really think that you should change your your mindset uh, about the work that you do. And I I really hope that if you do make it to this level, that we don't work together because the, the you, I, I'm not going to judge you too much about this because but yeah, I'm getting the sensation that you're trying to angle me, uh, angle f fish for an answer, and I'm not going to give you that answer. The answer I'm going to give you is that sure, if you want to be a really bad architect. Absolutely, just stick with test driven development, and then you will. If you're lucky, uh, be able to do the work at low-end systems or or companies who don't really know any better, and you're probably going to be less effective at that job than the average uh, senior software developer, because an average senior software developer will be no, uh, be able to do more than just know about test-driven development. Uh, and another approach is of course also to be this incompetent because ter uh, honestly guys test driven development is great but it's not enough to do uh, architect level stuff if you're not unless you're literally going to be an architect that has a fraction of the knowledge that you will need in order to be effective at the job because there are unfortunately architects like that as well who are just in the way in my experience for everything else uh, and they depend on other people to know the things that they should know themselves an example would be if you work in a corporation and they have a QA team then they might have people who know about the other forms of testing and like how to set things up and create good work processes and so forth but speaking from experience as I am an architect or like I have many roles today my last count is that I think that I have around eight jobs ish something like that I do about 10% of the work for each eight people so it adds up to a full workload for me but one of the roles that I have it's supposed to be my main role apart from tech leading and like all of this good stuff is to be an architect and I can tell you right now the bulk of what I do as part of my daily job is to plan out work processes set up like coding frameworks and set up uh, testing uh, strategies and like all of this stuff uh, for this the other developers who haven't well who either don't have the time because they're hired to do um, basically just do the coding uh, or they simply lack the experience and see this is the thing where a c company who understands the difference like how to structure a good dynamic within the teams that's what usually they do they hire someone who has the experience to do the high level stuff like a tech lead or a senior software developer or an architect like someone who basically just has the knowledge to set all the stuff up for all the other developers and so they can save on cost and like <laughs> save a lot of pain and frustration instead of having like this the, the, the subscriber type of person who just like 
basically gives themselves a title without actually knowing how to do all the things that are necessary to do a good job. Uh, they hire somebody who knows the things that are necessary. They put that per and they put that person in charge of setting everything up. And that is supposed to be the architect. And once you have all that set up uh, for the teams, well, then most of what you do is actually done. And testing, guys, to be an effective system architect and to be able to set up like all these work processes, testing is a big part of that. It's a massive part of that. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you don't have to learn BDD or any type of more advanced testing if your aim is to just be a software developer at usually the mid-level software developers or you want to work uh, as a code monkey uh, because usually uh, again, not all companies use say BDD or visual regression testing, contract based testing or other forms of testing that are relevant. Uh, so, but the bare minimum is usually test-driven development. Uh, my, if you are on the other hand looking to become like a technical architect or a system architect or something like that, I strongly encourage you to learn and master all of the form, all of these forms of testing, because the the role, or like that's supposed to be the case anyway, the role of a good system architect is to do architecture and setting up a work process and setting up like a like a holistic uh, solution for how a, a company is supposed to like do work and deliver on all of their goals and so forth testing is a massive part of that guys testing is usually not as important at small scale but it just increases in terms of importance it gets to the point where testing is almost equally important to product delivery when you get up to the uh, to the corporate level have a great day.